Well, in a way, this is kind of a little bit of a blast from the past, but I hope it's uh, serious enough to uh, rate maybe a redo or a <laughs> review. This is a program I did uh, just shortly after the George Floyd incident in Minneapolis. and I used to live in Minneapolis, and uh, so I was very close to that situation in terms of just the emotion of the whole thing. But I put together a little uh, prayer program. It was called the Praying Planet Podcast, and it was with an organization that was trying to make something happen. It, it didn't, but as a result of that, I learned a little bit more about the new prayer project that I'm currently doing. But um, I talk about uh, a gentleman named Howard Thurman, one of the uh, men who really mentored Martin Luther King Jr., and uh, I believe during Black History Month, what I said at that program, particularly toward the end of it, would uh, be very appropriate. It would be very good if we could revive uh, the memory and the message of Howard Thurman. So uh, here we go. This is about a few years ago, but uh, here we go uh, and uh, listen to it again. It'll be well worthwhile. I wasn't going to do a podcast this weekend. I've been very busy this week, lots of things, and the weekend was every bit as busy. And so I said to my friend Tom Ryan, who's the leader of the uh, Kingdom Connections, who are putting together the Praying Planet and the Praying Planet podcast that I work with, that uh, maybe I'll just uh, put it off to the first of next week. And he was fully in agreement with doing just that. However, things don't always work out as we may intend. And uh, the Spirit just kind of came to me in a variety of ways. And so, with your permission, on this Sunday night, I'd like to talk to you about some things that I believe really matter. And in particular, they really matter right now. So, the Praying Planet podcast for a Sunday night flowing into a Monday meets the marketplace morning. It begins right now. Now, I am a fortunate man because I took some of my own advice. I've been telling people for years that uh, you really have to prepare for the future. And I wasn't aware that it would come quite this quickly, but due to the COVID-19 lockdown, it's actually uh, accelerated. I said most of your work in business is going to be done in a virtual way, and you're going to have to learn how to use all of the broadcast and modern media. And since I've been in radio for more years than many of you have even been alive, I said I'm prepared to help people understand how to use the uh, modern media. Not just the social media, but the broadcast systems of radio and television, and how they can work for you, your message, and particularly your mission in life, and the business, and the career, and the achievements that you're trying to bring about. And so I've said, uh, think about putting a studio uh, in your office, maybe even in your home. Now, right now, I'm telling people, particularly in relationship to the work situation that uh, is with us now, and perhaps the one that will change us profoundly, I say you need three places in your life. First of all, you will need an office. There is a, a place, either at the office or particularly maybe in your home where uh, you just do the work of arranging and creating and putting together the work of the office. However, you should also have a study. Now, this is kind of an old-fashioned word, but uh, I remember my father who said that uh, he went to the office But there was a little room off the side of our home, and um, uh, my dad told me this was his study. And it was a smaller room, but it had a a table and had a small desk, and it had some of his books. And uh, oftentimes I would find him in there thinking, 
reading, maybe even praying. That was his study. And so uh, I've now said we not only need a office, we need to study, and now we need a studio. Everybody uh, better get ready in the place and space you work and serve to have a studio. Well, I'm fortunate. <laughs> when I decided to make this program for this Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, it didn't take me long because uh, that's exactly what I have. I have a significant studio right in my home, and I can reach people all around the world by radio or television, uh, and uh, all of the Internet and iCloud moves and means uh, to be just that. Here, there, and everywhere. So I put this together. And uh, here's the question that struck me. Of course, it's a trick question. Right now, we're overwhelmed and inundated with the uh, civil rights, the racial equality, all of the issues that have come out of the uh, terrible killing of a uh, black man in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Actually, that occurred just a few blocks from where I used to live. And then it has spread. And then along with that, of course, the uh, COVID crisis has accelerated. And now a number of things are taking place that we thought we had control over, but maybe we don't. And so it's a difficult week. Lots of bad news, lots of difficulty, lots of people hurting, lots of people wondering what it's all about. One of the questions that is put to, around, and in fact it was asked of me, and it was asked in kind of a hard way, because uh, it was kind of a trick question, Well, Stan, well, do black lives matter? Well, you know <laughs> the the trickiness of the question, because... Of course, but does that mean that I also agree with all of the positions that are coming out of that question? I've decided that perhaps uh, when I hear such a question, there's another question that should be asked. And it's this. Well, are there any lives that don't matter? I could put that right back. And I'm afraid uh, that uh, some of us, if we're honest, would have to admit that in some ways, in some places and spaces, there are lives that don't matter, or at least don't matter as much as other lives matter. However, I true, <laughs> true and strong answer to the question is, uh, God loves and cares for all lives. God loves and cares for all lives. And that's vital. And that's true. And he cares for you. And he cares for me. And he cares for all. God loves and cares for all lives. Well, as I often say, let that uh, just sit on your head for a while. But for those of us who are now thinking about how we work into the week, and particularly uh, those of us who are very much convinced that we do need to have a planet of people, an entire universe of people who are, are praying and praying profoundly. And uh, that's what this podcast is all about. Now, with a little slide off to that, one of the things that struck me was uh, I was reintroduced to someone I've known, not personally, but explored him some time ago in some of my reading and research. And uh, this life, this life of this black man mattered a great deal in many ways, and in particular to me even though I never met him. So, may I tonight introduce to you something I think should be the project that would really help us here on the praying planet to begin to move forward with some knowledge, some questions, and some prayers 
that may help us deal with all the mess that is around us right now. The man's name is Howard Thurman. Have you ever heard of Howard Thurman? Very simply, H-O-W-A-R-D, Thurman, T-H-U-R-M-A-N. He died in 1981 uh, at the age of 82. He was an esteemed theologian. And get this, he was the spiritual teacher and mentor and mattered a great deal to Martin Luther King Jr. He was the teacher and the mentor and the inspiration to Martin Luther King Jr. And please keep in mind, it was not just the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It was the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was a minister. And he will make a point throughout his life that uh, he never wanted people to forget that what he did was not the work just of a civil rights activist, not just the role of a black leader, but it was the role of a Christian minister. And much of his training came from Howard Thurman. Now, I would encourage you to do a little Google search and find out more about Howard Thurman. In particular, I was uh, moved by his statement to a group of young students when uh, they were asking the question, they said, well, you know, well, what, what should we do? What should we do to help change the world? What does the world need that we can do? And in a very wonderful way, he said this. Here's what you need to do. Discover what makes you become fully alive. What makes you become fully alive? Then do that. Because what the world needs is men and women who are fully alive. And that's what he was seeking to do. But in his many writings, and particularly his classic book called Meditations of the Heart, he'll give you some idea of a, what that fully aliveness might come from. Tis a gift to be simple. Tis a gift to be free. Tis a gift to come down where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, Twill be in the valley of love and delight. Soren Kierkegaard, uh, many of you know about him. You've had a little philosophy or heard about him. The philosopher will put it this way. Purity of heart is to will one thing. Now, no wonder Jesus said that the pure of heart would see God. You know, they alone keep their eyes in one constant and consistent direction and thus overcome the divisions created by the divided hearts and loyalties which plague the rest of us. As we grow spiritually, our lives become more and more centered and simple. There are only a few things that really matter and eventually, really only one. One of the things we're doing in the Christian Entrepreneur Network is we're saying that uh, we are seeking to build a life and business that matters and makes a difference. And so, uh, what hit me this Sunday morning, Pastor Richard Rohr in his meditations referred to Dr. Howard Thurman. And he went on to say this, Howard Thurman wrote this in Meditations of the Heart. The central element in communion with God is the act of self-surrender. The symbol of my prayer this day is the open heart. It is most natural for me to think of prayer 
in terms of the open hand. Yeah, my needs are so great and often so desperate that there seems to be not besides my own urgency. But I must open my heart to God. This will include my own deep urgencies and all the warp and woof of my desiring. These things deep within, I must trust with the full awareness that more important even than self-realization is the true glorifying of God. Thurman continues, Somehow I must make God central to me and in me, over and above the use to which I wish or need to put His energy or power. You see, God gives us energy and power. And how should we use it? Uh, What should we need? What should we give? What should we do? And Thurman continues, I surrender myself to God without any conditions or reservations. I shall not bargain with God. I shall not make my surrender piecemeal, but I shall lay bare the very center of me that all of my very being shall be changed with the creative energy of God. The creative energy of God. And then little by little, or in the vast area and arena of my life, my life must be transmuted in the life of God. As this happens, I come into the meaning of true freedom, and the burdens that I seemed unable to bear are floated in the current of the life and love of God. Maybe kind of heavy stuff. If you could read it uh, as I read it to you, I think it might even touch you more deeply. But here's my point. This man matters right now. And one of the things I would suggest, as my friend Pastor Richard Rohr said, every church should spend at least a year teaching people how to pray. Just do that. Make that, besides your worship and communion, uh, the primary emphasis of your life and business. And I would add this. Perhaps it's time for a movement to begin and talk and study and think and perhaps a podcast on the life and teachings of Howard Thurman. This black man whose life mattered so deeply to Martin Luther King Jr., And uh, if you go through the work of his life and his teaching and his preaching and his coaching and his counseling, you will find that we would all be better off. One of the better ways that we could perhaps discover what we should do now in the midst of the mess we're in, in the obviously the sickness and the disease and the racial and hate and divided mess we are in, Maybe we should spend some time doing exactly what Howard Thurman said. He said, this is the one thing you must do. You must pray. And you pray for one thing, that you will desire and do the will of God. This matters. This one thing you must do. You must pray to will and do the will of God. I'm Stan Houston, leader of the Master Entrepreneur, and right now, the Praying Planet Podcast. And you are more than free to reach out to us as uh, our experiment goes and grows. And as we go more and more on the air and around the world, 
uh, we would very much like for you to know more about us and to explore the mission of the praying planet and the work and mission we hope to do. If you'd like to know more, just reach out to me at stanhouston at gmail.com. stanhouston at gmail.com. Thank you for your time on this Sunday evening. And remember, let's do what really matters. Bye for now. And thank you for doing that. Thank you for listening. Howard Thurman, do a search and read the entire Wikipedia article. It's actually pretty hard to get some of his books right now, and that's something I'd like to change. But uh, please check that out, and particularly some of the ones that uh, influence many, many people, and in particular the legacy and the uh, person and personality and the faith and courage and conviction that it gave to uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And remember, it was the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The first thing he was, was a preacher and a pastor. And then everything flowed from that. 
Just let that sit on your head for a while during uh, these thoughts and celebrations. I'm Stan Houston for What It Takes Radio, an interesting ideas bonus program. Thank you for your time. Thank you for giving it uh, some energy. And perhaps it will even uh, stir your mind, move your spirit, and actually touch your heart and get you to do something, something different in 23. Best and blessings to you. Take care. All the best and bye for now.